Hi, welcome back to AQA Certificate for the Mathematics GCSE. Today, we're closing uh, Chapter 8 uh, on Chapter 8.5, where we talk about stationary points. And this is a great A-star video, so I hope you enjoy it, and let's get started. So, two things. Uh, first, you have to understand uh, the concept of a stationary point, which, um, well, you have to know what is a stationary point. And also, what is a maximum, a minimum, and a point of inflection? And these will come uh, quite obvious uh, later on, so don't worry about them. So do you remember um, last time we've talked about increasing and decreasing functions? We've talked about when it's smaller than negative 1, it's increasing larger than 1 is increasing, and in between is decreasing. But, uh, well, let me put them on to the screen. Yep, so these are the decre uh, increasing functions. These are the decreasing functions. But what about if they are exactly equal to um, those two boundary points, which is negative 1 and 1. So, <coughs> that, uh, if you put them into the differential uh, equation, um, which, uh, this for this equation is uh, x cubed minus 3x, and you shall get 0. So, What's that called? Um, well, obviously, this is called the stationary point. Um, quite straightforward, really. So, at the point um, negative 1, the gradient is 0, uh, represented by a horizontal line, same as um, at 1. So, these two points are stationary. Okay? So that's all um, you have to know for stationary point itself. So there are three types of stationary points that you have to know. And on the last um, graph, we've got a um, classical um, cubic function. Um, looks like that. So it peaks at one point, dips at another, and goes straight up again. So instead of that, I've got an easier, well, at least I think it's easier way to describe them. So at a point of which it peaks, in front of the stationary point, um, it will be increasing, and after it will be decreasing. And a good example of that kind of graph will be uh, y equals negative x squared. And that is uh, the negative um, parabola, which goes up and down on the x, uh, uh, yeah, on the x axis. And another one will be the reverse. It dips at the left, from the left hand side, then goes to a stationary point and turn into an increasing function. So that would be uh, classically a uh, parabola. Um, it doesn't matter for any equation because um, as long as there is a pit for or a peak, uh, they will be called those three names and I'm not showing them just yet. And there will be another type which after the um, stationary point remains going the same uh, direction. So either it increases, stops, and increases, or it decreases, stops, and decrease. So that would be, uh, well, I'm not saying it yet. Uh, let's give an example. Um, for that, uh, classically, um, it would be a y equals x cubed 
which is a cubic. Uh, this is a normal cubic, not a well classical one that peaks and goes back down. But this one stops at zero. It goes horizontal at that time and goes back up. So these are the three types. What about their names? Well, at this point, the y is at the highest possible value on this um, hump. So it's named maximum because it's max at this line. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and here you can probably guess it's called the minimum. Well, obviously because it it's not the maximum, it's the reverse, the minimum. What about this one? Well, you don't really get max or min. So do you get medium? No. You get inflection. This uh, is the point of reflect uh, inflection. Yeah, so it keeps going the same way. So uh, if you have a graph, you can easily tell the uh, if they are maximum, minimum, or inflection. So I have to say there aren't any questions again for this um, video. And not that I'm lazy to do them, it's there aren't a good way to make questions out of these things but I'm going to show you a way of easily determining the nature of a a stationary point uh, namely um, maximum minimum and inflection so yeah let's start looking at that so we have to find the nature of the stationary points with style no, not really. There's a mean style, and it's not some kind of a short form. Don't really think about that. And the actual thing that we're going to do is a double differentiation. And if you can't read that, I'm sorry for that. <laughs> and well, let's talk about what is double differentiation. So we know that a normal function will be f(x) a differentiation, uh, well, differentiated function will be f dash, or, um, yeah, thing, x. But a double differentiation will be f double, um, thing, <laughs> uh, x. I'm not sure about the name of that, so, yeah, just leave it. So these are how things are going to be represented or if you like to you can do a d square y over dx squared uh, like this one so that you know dy over dx but this is um, if you differentiate dy over dx you get d 2y dx squared um, that's how we say it and it means to differentiate it twice really and I give it a um, fancy name, the rate of change function, and that's my name. Uh, not, never mind. Uh, that's how I call it. You don't need to um, follow it, but I am going to do that. So um, you probably <laughs> saw something there, but just leave it. Um, so, yeah, what does it mean? Then, do you remember that? Um, well, you must have remembered the um, function, the x cubed minus three x function, and you remember that is a maximum up here and a minimum down there. So, um, the x values are. Um, negative 1 and plus 1. So let's try out double differentiation. Um, that's the equation and after double differentiating I give you a sec um, to differentiate it once and again. 
and you should get 6 eggs. Hopefully you did it quick enough. And now, one thing to think about is whether, um, how will it determine if it's maximum, minimum, or infection. When you put in uh, the values that we want to put in, which is x equals negative 1 or x equals 1, we'll get actually, um, well, two answers d square y over dx squared equals negative 6 for uh, x equals negative 1 or just simply positive 6 if you use normal 1. So what does that mean? You remember that when x is negative 1, which is at that point the maximum, so a negative uh, rate of change function will be a maximum. This is always, uh, well, if it's negative, it's always maximum. Okay, negative is a max, and uh, same goes the other way, positive. Uh, okay. Sorry for the typing. <laughs> Um, so yeah, positive uh, function for rate of change is ma uh, neg minimum. So, but um, I'll explain why. Because um, why don't I get a graph out and it would be easier to explain. So we're back with a graph and at this point, remember we are on a particular point, I will label it red. Okay, so on this point, which is x equals negative 1, the change is um, negative 6. So that means the, the rate of change of the gradient function is negative 6. So the gradient is actually decreasing from then. Doesn't matter if it goes up here or goes down there, as long as it is a stationary point and it's going down, it's going to be a uh, maximum. Same applies for minimum. When it's uh, a positive change of gradient, it's going to increase um, from then onwards. So it's going to be a positive, uh, well, gradient. And doesn't matter if it goes down before as long as it is a stationary point and it goes back out, it's going to be a minimum. So I ended up using um, the web browser here. Um, you can see this is actually on the web that I get my graphs on. And um, I'm going to demonstrate a um, cube, well, as I've said, uh, on examples, this is a y equals x cubed um, equation, and this is a perfect uh, inflection graph. And at point zero, this is definitely a, a stationary point, as you can differentiate it to find out. And uh, now, I want you to try to double differentiate it. Um, so. I hope you get uh, answer equals um, 6x. Um, so, but what makes a difference? Um, when you put x equals 0 in it, on this uh, stationary point, it is going to be 0, is it? Yeah, so, let's grab that. Um, if, uh, Double differentiation makes zero. It will be a uh, inflection point. So yeah, let me type that out and, and see. Okay, so yeah, I ended up using this page again. So yeah, this is basically how do you find um, changes and how do you determine if it's uh, maximum or minimum or even an inflection.
So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've learned something, uh, leave me a like and uh, comment on the video. Tell me what I can do better and yeah, um, I'll see you next time.